Okay, so um, we're still covering uh, photosynthesis, which is chapter seven. Hopefully this will be the last um, section that I do, but I did want to go back and review a little bit um, of the Calvin cycle. So we know, so for photosynthesis, we know there are two stages. There is the light reactions that occur on the thylakoids inside of the chloroplast, and then there are the Calvin cycle reactions that occur in the stroma or the fluid part of the chloroplast. So we're looking at step one of the Calvin cycle. Um, and step one is called carbon dioxide fixation or fixation of carbon dioxide. And basically this first um, highlighted note here is, is the most important thing that happens. It's the attachment or the fixation of carbon dioxide to RUBP or ribulose biphosphate. So um, this, the enzyme that carries this out um, is called RUBP carboxylase, but we, we call it Rubisco um, for short, I guess. Um, but anyway, that's what happens in step one is that carbon dioxide becomes attached to RUBP. And it's an important step because we're gonna come back to this step um, because there are, there, there are some things that can happen that are not good for plants, especially in a very hot environment. Um, high, high temperatures um, cause certain things to happen that aren't, just aren't good for plants. So we will cover that. Um, we will come back to step one and talk about the problems with it for some of the plants. Now, step two is when, and there, there's several things that happen in this step. I just want you to understand that after step one, the carbon in carbon dioxide becomes a part of RUBP, um, and which has five carbons in it. So you end up with like a six carbon molecule. But in step two, the carbon dioxide um, or that molecule um, that is formed is reduced to G3P. And this is the molecule that is the product of um, the Calvin cycle reactions. This molecule can go on to become glucose or starch or amino acids or fatty acids, but it's the, it's the molecule that becomes the food for the plant. When we say plants make their own food, G3P is the product. That is the, that is the molecule that becomes um, some kind of food substance you know for the plant and for whatever eats the plant so step two is called carbon dioxide reduction and two things you need to know the final product is g3p and the products of the light reactions are used in this step so nadph and atp are used in step two in carbon dioxide reduction now, the last step is we have to regenerate the RUBP. The RUBP is that five carbon molecule that carbon dioxide attached to in step one. So um, now that carbon dioxide attaches to it, and now that it is used to make G3P, we have used up the RUBP. We have to make more. So in step three, <clears throat> basically for every, um, if you think about it this way, for every six G3P molecules that are produced, five of them are used to make three RUBPs to go back into the Calvin cycle. And then the sixth one, the last one out of the six is used to make food for the, for the plant, okay? Now, the importance of the Calvin cycle, um, the G3P, the name for it is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, G3P for short. It is a three-carbon molecule, so two molecules of G3P can go on to produce glucose or fructose, which are both six carbon molecules. Um, <clears throat> G3P can also form fatty acids and glycerol to make plant oils. It can form starch and cellulose. Remember, cellulose is the component that you find in plant cell walls. And also G3P can be converted to amino acids. And 
this is just an illustration, the fate of G3P. <coughs> Excuse me. So G3P can produce glucose, which can be used to make fructose and sucrose. G3P can produce fatty acids. G3P can produce amino acids. Um, and then I didn't say glucose can also go on. Uh, chains of glucose form starch and chains of glucose form cellulose. So <clears throat> now the last section, um, we're going to talk about other types of photosynthesis that occur because sometimes that first step is a problem. It causes a problem called photorespiration. Basically what it is is that RUBP can bind to carbon dioxide. That's what it's supposed to do. Bind to carbon dioxide and then step two would occur. Um, so RUBP is supposed to bind to carbon dioxide and then finish the rest of the Calvin cycle and make food for the plant. But the problem is that RUBP can also bind to oxygen. So when that happens, then there's no food being made because the component that's important is the carbon atom, the carbon from the carbon dioxide. Oxygen gas doesn't have carbon. So this is what happens in the majority of plants. The majority of plants are called C3 plants and they carry out C3 photosynthesis. The majority of plants, especially those that live in that um, live in cool climates, use RUBP carboxylase or Rubisco to fix carbon dioxide to RUBP in the mesophyll tissue. Okay. Now, the problem comes in when you have hot, dry climates because those stomata. Remember, the stomata are the pores in the underside of the leaf that open up to allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen to leave. And what they'll do is they'll close because another thing that can leave through those stomata is water. Water vapor leaves the plant through the stomata and in hot dry climates the um, stomata will close so that the plant will not dry out so that it will not wilt. So what happens when those stomata close is that carbon dioxide decreases because the carbon dioxide is coming in through the stomata. So they close, then the, the carbon dioxide will decrease. All the carbon dioxide that's inside the meso mesophyll tissue is being used for the Calvin cycle. So as long as those stomata are closed, the amount of carbon dioxide is going to go down because there's no more coming in. But oxygen builds up. Oxygen levels increase in the mesophyll tissue in the leaf because oxygen's not being allowed to leave through the stomata. Since RUBP can combine with oxygen just as easily as it can with carbon dioxide, it will combine with which, whichever molecule is happens to be close to it, you know. So every time RUBP combines with oxygen, it's a wasteful reaction. It doesn't provide any food for the plant and it wastes the RUBP that's there. So let's talk about C4 plants and how they have adapted to solve the problem of photorespiration. So what the C4 plants do is in the mesophyll cells, in the uh, carbon dioxide fixation step, instead of using RUBP, they use a different enzyme, PEP carboxylase, I think, but PEP instead of RUBP. PEP is used to attach to the carbon dioxide because PEP will not combine with oxygen. It will only combine with the carbon dioxide. So you don't get the problem of photorespiration. So what happens is in C4 plants is the carbon dioxide is fixed to PEP in the mesophyll cells. And then um, the other steps of the Calvin cycle occur in um, other cells. So um, the steps of the Calvin cycle are separated out in, in different cells of the, of the plant tissue. All right, so what you're seeing here is a C3 plant where the mesophyll cells, um, mesophyll tissue is all 
this area here. All of this tissue is mesophyll tissue. Bundle sheath cells are the ones that surround the veins in the leaf. And they don't have any um, chloroplast in them. Um, so what happens in the C4 plant is the carbon fixation step occurs here in the mesophyll cells, okay? So the carbon dioxide is fixed or attached to PEP instead of RUBP because PEP will not also bond with oxygen. And then the rest of the Calvin cycle occurs in the bundle sheath cells, which contain chloroplast. See, over here in the C3 plant, they don't, but in the C4 plant, they do. You see the chloroplast in the bundle sheath cells. So the um, molecule that's produced in the first step goes on and finishes up the Calvin cycle in the bundle sheath cells. So this ends up separating the steps of carbon dioxide, um, of, of the Calvin cycle, sorry, separating the steps of the Calvin cycle by location. Then we have, um, <clears throat> oh, and here's just a picture, okay. So carbon dioxide fixation in C3 and C4 plants. This is a good illustration. Basically, carbon dioxide is fixed to RUBP in the C3 plants. And then the whole Calvin cycle process takes place in mesophyll tissue. In the C4 plants, carbon dioxide is fixed to PEP in mesophyll cells, and the rest of the Calvin cycle occurs in bundle sheath cells. And this shows you a picture of um, an example. This is corn, an example of a C4 plant. And then there's one other type of plant that carries out CAM photosynthesis. CAM plants separate the steps of, of the Calvin cycle by time. So at night, when the stomata are open, the can plants carry out that first step. They fix carbon dioxide to PEP, solve the, the photorespiration problem because PEP will not also combine with oxygen. They store that molecule that's formed in large vacuoles, and then during the day, when NADPH and ATP are available because of the light, because they are built up in the light reactions, the stomata will close to conserve water, and that is the time when the rest of the Calvin cycle will occur. So, and you can see the illustration here, and an example of a can plant is a pineapple. So carbon dioxide is fixed at night, and then the rest of the Calvin cycle occurs during the day. And this, just remember that C4 plants and CAM plants are adapted to solve the problem of photorespiration, which is wasteful, okay? Now, C4 plants are most adapted to high light intensities, high temperatures, and little rainfall. C3 plants are better adapted to cool, um, moist conditions, and CAM plants are better adapted to it says, it says here extreme aridity, which just means dry conditions. And there we go. That's it.